So far we have uh, focused on the DEA modeling of uh, multiple outputs, both good outputs and bad outputs. So for the sake of balance, uh, let us also have a couple of uh, words on the parametric modeling of distance functions. So uh, just to remind you about the concept of the output distance function, so remember that in theory the distance function measures the distance to the frontier and we can think about it as a generalization of the of the production technology so you can think about it as a generalized uh, production function if you like so obviously it is also possible to then because we have a functional representation of the technology then parameterize this distance function applying the usual kind of um, uh, parameterizations like the Cobb Douglas or Translog. And uh, indeed, I already mentioned also that in the according to the duality theory, the properties of the technology carry over to the to the distance function. So if the if the true technology is uh, has certain parametric form, then of course also the distance function should have the same kind of parametric form. I mentioned that for the Cobb Douglas uh, um, cost function, and that also of course then also also carries over to the to the cost function. So um, I emphasize that uh, in the next discussion I will mainly focus on the output distance function, but uh, the same kind of remarks apply equally well to other type of distance functions like the directional distance function, and then also for the for the cost function, which is also very commonly used for representing multiple outputs. So let me actually start with the with the cost function. So to illustrate to you how the, the translog formulation of the of the cost function would look like. So here is the formulation that I took from the uh, book chapter by Bill Green. Uh, so here is on the as the as the on the left hand side we have the log of the of the total cost and uh, notice and remember that the, the cost function is a function of input prices W and output quantities Y. So then the translog functional form applied to the input prices, of course, would then also, also include all kinds of, uh, not only the log values of the input prices, but also logs of the output quantities. And then also there's kind of interaction terms. So there is a, a log of WK multiplied by log of WM. And similarly for outputs. And then there's also this kind of interactions between input prices and uh, output quantities included. So this would be the, the cost function. And obviously notice that uh, with the cost function, we also implicitly model some, some uh, output sets of the technology. When we have multiple output variables, there is implicitly some kind of uh, output te technologies and, and some kind of synergies uh, involved. Uh, what about the distance functions? So um, I have taken here from, uh, from uh, the EJOR article by Perelman and Santini, the formulation of the output distance function. So, of course, we can also formulate the, the output distance function. And usually we take the logarithm of the output distance function. And here also we take uh, uh, logs of all inputs and logs of all outputs and their, and their uh, second order terms, so their cross products. And then also this, uh, uh, this uh, product of log of x and log of y. So I will follow this notation of Perelman and Santini. So notice that this alpha coefficient in their formulation, they refer to the output variables. So there is this coefficient alpha m that uh, apply to, to the log of y variable. And then we have when we have the product of log of y m and log of y n, then there is alpha m n. So when there's two, two subscripts in this alpha, then it refers to the second order terms. And similarly, beta coefficients are for the inputs, and delta is for the for the product of log of x and log of y. But I'll mainly focus on the output sets, so these alpha coefficients are of main interest in the following. So one thing before we proceed uh, worth noting here is uh, notice that this kind of formulation of the tra translog functional form to all inputs and all outputs. Uh, uh, it's entirely symmetric. So nothing in this function 
really says that this is an output distance function. It could be equally well an input distance function or directional distance function or some other, other distance function. So nothing really makes this kind of formulation particularly an input distance function or output distance function. So we will need to have some kind of additional regularity properties for these parameters to make sure that this function is actually an output distance function. So I come back to that point shortly. Another point that, that, uh, that uh, I want to make here at this point is that uh, if you want to estimate something like this uh, by, by regression techniques like, like SFA, so if you think about this uh, distance or this log of distance function as, as some kind of uh, efficiency measure, so therefore this uh, item on the left hand side, we can think about that as the, as the composite error term, like in the usual usual kind of uh, parametric estimation setting. So we would have the composite error term epsilon on the left hand side and then on the right hand side we have some uh, translog function of inputs and outputs. So therefore to be able to estimate we need to move this uh, error term first to the right hand side of the equation and we would need to move one of these uh, input and output variables to the left hand side of the equation. So in practice that's always always required. But that's not really that dramatic step. So it is possible to make this uh, uh, parameterization such that uh, it doesn't matter which input or which output variable we, we formulate to the left hand side. And it's possible to move the, move the uh, composite error term to the right hand side. So I will not go so much to this kind of, uh, kind of normalization required by that operation. I just mentioned that one of the variables need to be anyway chosen as the, as the dependent variable. But now to the first question, how can we make sure that this is an output distance function as we assumed and not an input distance function? So this paper by Perelman and Santini is, uh, is uh, very good in respect. So they carefully state the additional parameter restrictions required to ensure that it's indeed an output distance function. And uh, Two types of restrictions are needed, so so uh, we 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 need to have symmetry between this uh, these alphas and betas, so the second order parameters, because uh, we have these uh, these um, uh, in this their notation this kind of sum of uh, uh, log of y m and log of y n. Of course, it's the same if we take take in, in the other order. If we take log of y n times log of y m, it's it's just the same same product. So this is why we need this kind of symmetry conditions, in any case. But uh, particularly to make it sure that it's an output distance function, then this is this conditions for linear homogeneity stated in the right bottom part of this slide. So to make sure that it's it's an output distance function, then uh, we need to make sure that this uh, first order alpha coefficient, so this alpha subscript m, that these alpha m's sum to one. And then the sum of these second order alpha, alpha subscript mn, so those parameters need to sum to zero. And then those interaction terms with inputs, so those delta coefficients, those must sum to zero as well with the sum over m. So those are critically important uh, uh, parameter restrictions to ensure that we are estimating an output distance fu function rather than input distance function. So it's not enough to just uh, formulate some translog function between input and output because we don't really know what is the, what is the orientation. So these kind of uh, parameter restrictions will be needed in addition to that, that uh, to make sure that it's an, it's an uh, output distance function. So how does then this kind of translog output distance function really look like? So what kind of output uh, sets or output isochrons uh, the translog technology uh, implies? And I tried to search it from the, from the uh, different papers in the literature. Only paper I could find was this kind of uh, more like a simulation paper by Rolf Fair and his co-authors uh, uh, where I reproduced this uh, figure number one. So here they have illustrated the, the frontier of the, of the translog technology. Here is uh, two outputs, y1 and y2. 
and they have different different uh, model specifications, so different parameterizations of the translog. So based on this figure, it looks like uh, uh, indeed this uh, translog uh, uh, translog output sets could be well behaved. That uh, that perhaps we can have this kind of uh, synergies estimated with translog, and there can be a convex uh, convex output sets. However, notice that in this diagram, this uh, figure has been scaled such that it's uh, it's a uh, um, minimum value. The, the the or the origin is not really the origin, but there's the point. Uh, uh, two and three, so there's two units of output one and three units of output two. So this uh, this uh, figure doesn't really uh, depict the uh, full picture of how the how this output isoquants look like. And it turns out that actually it's it's uh, surprisingly difficult to plot this kind of output uh, isoquants of the translog technology because we have so many of these uh, of these uh, interaction terms. So uh, there's not really any closed form solution to the to the isoquant. So therefore, I made this kind of numerical calculation of the of the output isoquant. So I have here this kind of uh, isoquant map. And, uh, I start with the with the classic case of the Cobb Douglas production function. So remember that uh, that um, Cobb Douglas functional form is of course the special case where we have. Uh, eliminated all of these second order and interaction terms. So in that case, uh, if we set all of these second order uh, alpha parameters equal to zero, so this alpha alpha one, one, alpha one, two, alpha two, one, and alpha two, two, all of them are equal to zero. So then we have the special case of the Cobb Douglas output sets. So in this diagram, uh, I have in indicated different values of, uh, I have made this kind of grid, uh, computational grid uh, algorithm, and I have, I have then plotted with different input levels, there's a different shades of gray indicate different input levels to just to get an idea how the output, uh, output sets look like. And obviously in the Cobb-Douglas case, uh, we have this kind of setting that uh, these uh, output sets are not really convex. Uh, perhaps more worryingly also, these output sets are not really even bounded. So, so if you would think about this kind of uh, multiple output setting with Cobb-Douglas functional form, <clears throat> then there would be really strong incentive to specialize in one or, or the other output because then you, would, you could actually expand, uh, by specializing, you could expand your output to infinity with the, with the given resources. So this is not really a, that meaningful representation of the multiple output technology to use the Cobb-Douglas functional form. And this was already noticed in the economic literature in the 1950s that the Cobb-Douglas functional form doesn't really <clears throat> extend to this kind of multiple output setting very, very nicely. So now I will focus on this, on this parameter alpha 1, 1, and I will start to change it to go to this uh, translog case, more general translog case. And on this slide, I have also noted that this uh, homogeneity and symmetry conditions introduced in this uh, in this Perelman and Santini, or perhaps they were introduced already earlier, but at least uh, I found it in the paper. So this homogeneity and symmetry conditions actually imply that if we set in the two output setting, if we set one of these parameters, so I choose to control this uh, alpha one one but these homogeneity and symmetry conditions of the output distance function immediately uh, imply certain values. So, for example, if I increase this uh, alpha 1, 1 to 0 0.1, so we now move from the Cobb-Douglas setting to the genuinely to the translog case, so these uh, symmetry condition implies that uh, if I set alpha 1, 1 equal to 0 0.1, then alpha 2, 2 must be also equal to 0 0.1, and uh, the homogeneity condition therefore implies that this alpha 1, 2 and alpha 2, 1 must be equal to minus 0 0.1. So therefore, I can make this kind of numerical examination of the output isoquants by just controlling a single parameter, this alpha 1, 1, which simplifies things. So when we have the output distance function, then we only need a single parameter to control for this uh, these second order terms. So therefore, let's look at how this output set look like if we start to increase this uh, 
this uh, second order coefficient. So remember that in the Cobb Douglas case, we had the non convex output sets and which were also not bounded. So increasing this parameter then start to influence the shape of the shape of the output sets. And notice that when this uh, alpha parameter gets big enough, then we have this kind of situation like uh, Rolf Fair and his co-authors indicated that we can have actually a um, convex output set. But notice that they do not really hit the axis. They, when we increase the parameter, then, then we never actually get to the, to the axis. So always when, when this alpha then alpha parameter is, is high enough to, to satisfy convexity, we notice that uh, free disposability gets immediately violated. So it's not possible to have uh, such kind of parameterization of the output, uh, output sets that would satisfy the free disposability and convexity at the same time. Uh, obviously, with, the, with this kind of log transform, Cobb Douglas or translocker, technologies, we cannot really take a logarithm of zero, so we cannot really get some kind of uh, um, isoquants that would eventually reach this axis. And this I have illustrated in the case of, uh, of the um, two output setting, but of course it also extends to the multiple outputs. So therefore I conclude the following. So if we have the Cobb-Douglas parameterization of the distance functions or cost functions or whatever, so this is really recognized to be a poor choice because uh, uh, output sets are unbounded and they are not convex. So, so in some sense, this non-convexity is also a disturbing thing because I mentioned about this uh, synergies of joint production. So if firms can choose to specialize, then, then why don't they specialize? Why, wouldn't, why would anybody then then uh, engaged in multiple output production if there's no any benefit or if there's actually like a negative returns to scope as a result of that. So everybody would want to specialize if that was the, the true technology. And a practical issue, of course, with the Cobb Douglas case is that uh, zero outputs become a problem. So if you do observe specialized firms together with this kind of multiple output firms, like in this Delocker et al paper, then how do we model those kind of firms that have zero of certain output. The translock, out, translock technology is often considered as a remedy to these problems of this uh, Cobb-Douglas case, but I believe that this translock case is also kind of poorly understood. So in my simulation, I have shown that, uh, that uh, you have to choose in translock case that either you have this uh, unbounded and non-convex set of the, of the Cobb-Douglas, so it doesn't necessarily solve automatically um, this problem of the Cobb Douglas technology. So if it can, if, if the parameterization is such that it can solve it, then uh, anyway, the free disposability will be violated. So if we wanted to have free disposability, then we cannot have that one as well. The same problem with zero output still persists, but in the translog case, we have still perhaps the added problem of multicollinearity and in the applications that I'm familiar with, this, this uh, multicollinearity of the translog becomes usually quite, a, quite an issue. So just to illustrate this, uh, I have here calculated the correlation matrix uh, uh, for, the, for this uh, Finnish electricity distribution firms when we take this kind of uh, uh, second order terms of the, of, the, um, of the translog into account. So if you would estimate the translog production function in the or sorry, translog cost function, like in this uh, Bill Green's uh, formulation before, using this uh, electricity distribution firms, then uh, we have very, very high uh, correlations, especially for the second order terms. So I have here indicated uh, with red color all those uh, pairs of uh, variables uh, in, the, in the translog cost frontier that uh, we have uh, correlation coefficient of 0 0.95 or higher. So we have uh, several very, very highly correlated, uh, correlated variables. And not only those kind of uh, um, cases where there's this, uh, this uh, log of an output variable is raised to power two, but also with many, many of this kind of interaction terms. So I can see here that there are 11 
uh, 11 pairs of output variables that have a, a correlation coefficient of at least 0 0.95 and, and uh, even more cases where these uh, correlation coefficients are, are greater than 0 0.9. So in my experience, this is typically what happens if I try to try to apply the translog functional form, it just, just uh, gets such kind of uh, extreme cases of uh, multi multicollinearity. Perhaps uh, practitioners of SFA work with the applications where this uh, kind of uh, high correlation of the variables is not such a problem, but I believe that in the case of multiple outputs, uh, it can be a common, common situation that, uh, that uh, these uh, firms are in the sample are similar in terms of their choice of outputs or, or this kind of output profiles, that uh, this can be a common problem. And uh, in my view, it's kind of not really explicitly recognized in the, in the parametric uh, literature. So this is why I'm not really a big fan of this uh, parametric formulations of the, of the, um, of the distance functions, uh, because when, when I try to apply it, then it usually just fails miserably. So therefore, in the next lesson, then, then I will uh, discuss the uh, semi-non-parametric approach I've re referred to stoned and how to, how to extend stoned to deal with multiple outputs.